Top 6 Python Libraries for Beginners Hi everybody, if you're looking to start your career as a data scientist from scratch, then you are in the right place. Python is renowned for its huge collection of over 137,000 libraries. In fact, you'll find a library for almost everything in this amazing programming language. Each library is built to fulfill a specific purpose. A library typically contains pieces of code, or modules. It saves you time and effort, as the pieces of code present you with a ready-made solution. In this short video, I'm going to discuss the top six Python libraries for beginners. These basic libraries are easy to learn. You really need to master these libraries to upgrade your Python skills. Number one, NumPy. NumPy, also labeled numerical Python, provides excellent support for different dimensional array objects and matrices. NumPy isn't simply confined to providing arrays. It also provides an assortment of tools to manage these arrays. NumPy is truly efficient, fast, and well-suited for managing matrices and arrays. Most of the code in NumPy is written in Python. But C and C++ are used to write some of its complex methods to speed up its performance. NumPy presents you with useful tools for integration with other programming languages such as Fortran, C, and C++. You don't have a pre-installed NumPy library in the Python package, so you need to first install NumPy to use it. You could use the pip command, pip install NumPy, for installation. Number 2. TensorFlow TensorFlow, an open-source numerical computing library, was created by the Google Brain Research Team in 2015. This resourceful library has a flexible environment of tools and community resources. These tools permit software engineers to conduct machine learning, ML, and deep learning, DL, research, and develop and deploy ML-driven solutions. TensorFlow defines and runs computations involving tensors. This library can quickly train and run deep neural networks, or DNNs, that are used to develop various artificial intelligence AI applications. TensorFlow shines in the following essential areas in ML and DL. Natural Language Processing, or NLP. Managing Deep Neural Networks. Building Deep Learning Models. Abstraction Capabilities. Partial Differential Equation. Image, Text, and Speech Recognition and fast collaboration of ideas and code. Number three, Matplotlib. Matplotlib offers you limitless charts and customizations right from simple histograms to complex scatter plots. This data visualization library lays down an array of themes, palettes, colors, and other options to customize your plots. You can use this handy library to perform data exploration for an ML project or prepare a presentation for stakeholders. Matplotlib contains a comprehensive set of plotting tools, such as charts, graphs, 2D and 3D diagrams, and other data visualization tools that enable you to conduct in-depth data analysis. Based on your analysis, you can build reliable ML models. Compared to other advanced libraries, Matplotlib is pretty low level. You need more commands to generate eye-catching graphs and figures in this library. But the main advantage of Matplotlib is it is highly flexible. You can generate virtually any type of graph using this library. Number four, SciPy. SciPy is the perfect library for scientific and mathematical functions. Python specialists simply love this library's fast computational power. SciPy handles complex math operations, such as numerical interpolation, statistics, linear algebra, and integration, etc., in quick time. This results in the increase in the speed of the development and integration of ML models. The major features of SciPy include stats functions, optimization functions, and signal processing functions. The general consensus is that SciPy plus NumPy equals improved computations. Since SciPy is constructed on top of NumPy, it's easier to operate on its arrays. As a result, the execution of computing operations is instantaneous. Number 5. Scikit-learn Scikit-learn is an addition to the major scientific and numeric Python libraries. Initially, Scikit-learn was created as a third-party extension of SciPy. However, it's a standalone library now, and a very popular one at that. Scikit-learn offers a lot of flexibility. The other thing is the easy-to-understand documentation contains a lot of examples. This open-source ML library comes loaded with the following features. 
data sets, clustering, feature extraction, feature selection, cross-validation, parameter tuning, ensemble methods, dimensionality reduction, supervised models, and unsupervised models. Number 6. Seaborn Seaborn is mainly used for making statistical graphs. This data visualization library is built on top of matplotlib, and it's closely integrated with data structures. The central part of Seaborn is data visualization, hence this library essentially helps in the exploration and understanding of data. To learn about Seaborn, you need to be familiar with matplotlib and numpy. Some of the functionalities of this library include visualization of univariate and biunivariate distribution, determines the relationship between variables, automatically estimates and plots linear regression plots, and supports abstractions for multi-plot grids. We have a short course on the AI Sciences platform that teaches you about these Python libraries. Name of the course, Python for Data Science and Data Analysis, 89 Lessons. This practical learning course covers the basics of Python, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, Bokeh, and Scikit-Learn. If you're interested in learning more about becoming a data scientist, then be sure to check out our courses at the first link in the description. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos helping you to start your data science and AI career and more. Check out this playlist of our data science and machine learning lessons and see you in the next video. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.